are in Krakow at Confidence Conference and my guest is Richard Thiem. Hello, Richard. Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Even though it's raining a little bit. It is cold and rainy, but... Yeah. But like the confidence climate, actually. Well, Earth is not always a friendly place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Richard, could you please introduce yourself? What do you do professionally? Uh, for 21 years, almost 22 now, I have uh, sp just done speaking and writing mm -hmm. about the larger impacts of technology on, on people, on organizations, on mm -hmm. geopolitical structures, on everything. Okay, now that you are focusing on uh, religion issues and mm -hmm. technology as well, mm -hmm. what do those two things have in common? Well, they have a lot in common because uh, let's let's start with technology. Technology shapes the way people think. Uh, they usually uh, notice it when a new technology changes how they think, and then they forget it. Uh, you don't come in and say, "Oh, we're using the power grid today." You just assume the lights go on. Uh, you take for granted the technologies that have become the background of your life, uh, but. In, but when they're first introduced, they change everything about your life, including what it means to be a human being, including the cultural and social and, and thought worlds that we inhabit. And ethical worlds. Now, religion is one of those cultural and social and thought worlds that we inhabit. Mm -hmm. And I used to be an Episcopal clergyman. Mm -hmm. I did that for 16 years. And in the early 1980s, uh, playing with an Apple II computer, mm -hmm. I had an insight into how computing, if it went the way I thought it would, would, would change religion. And because mm -hmm. I was in a religious structure, I began writing and speaking to those, to those mm -hmm. uh, themes. Because um, who we think we are, who we think God is, not who God is, but who we think mm -hmm. God is, uh, how we frame our religions, uh, how we organize our dogmas and doctrines, all of those are functions of our technology. Uh, so that people don't usually uh, recognize how much the current religions that we all recognize, mm -hmm. all of them, emerged with writing. Mm -hmm. And writing turned flesh and blood human beings into text. Mm -hmm. And then we interacted with the text. That eliminated all of the religions that had developed in oral cultures. Well, the printing press did something similar, and electronic communications is doing something like that again. It, mm -hmm. So I saw that it was as big an I issue uh, for religions as the printing press and writing and even speech before had been. And so I began addressing those issues. And the religious world, um, bless its heart, is a little slow mm -hmm. to pick up on new innovative technologies. Oh, okay. and, a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't uh, find uh, an, a conversation about that. And that's why I left that, that career uh, and that work um, not my commitments, mm -hmm. but that career in order to speak and write full time about technology and its impacts not only on religion, but on all the other things because the impacts are, are similar. They work the same way, mm -hmm. but they um, help address, uh, in the early days I helped teachers, business people, um, security workers, everyone understand the difference uh, that was coming as a result of this uh, huge revolution in IT. Oh, well, that sounds really fascinating. Yeah. And what is the title of your speech here at Confidence then? What are you going to speak uh, to, you know, all those hackers, white hack, hack I, hackers? I think this, he picked one, I think it was called Spy versus Bot versus Spy, but it was mm -hmm. about information, uh, information warfare and the information space that we inhabit and uh, with a focus because of where we are on how the Russians are currently uh, doing such a good job at propaganda, at mastering the information speeds, at saturating their own people. Uh, and that required me to show how since World War II, the, that information space, propaganda, disinformation, misinformation, um, is the water in which we all swim. And so it, the project of understanding what's real begins with understanding how the structures of information and communication alter and can be manipulated to, mm -hmm. to make a big difference. So I tried to keep it focused on, on what was most relevant because we're not that far from Ukraine and Russia here. Well, and uh, you can hear the boots on the ground almost. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, um, you're uh, the active writer. What was your last publication about? Well, the last book. Uh, I have a new novel called Foam coming out this year, but I'll talk about the one that was issued a couple of years ago. It was a team effort headed by Mike Swords and Robert Powell on, uh, it was called UFOs in Government, a Historical Inquiry. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a work of history. It's in 65 university libraries, including Basel and all over the world, uh, because it's recognized as the only book on that subject that is thoroughly documented. We have a lot of footnotes and they all point to primary documents and it's about the government and how over half a century the government responded to the phenomena 
of UFOs uh, in, in light of national security concerns. So we mapped that from the 1940s to 1980s using documents which the research team has unearthed after over 50 years of, of burrowing and digging into the subject. And we stay focused on the government because that we can document. But because the government continued to respond to UFO phenomena and made decisions about how to handle it in public and how to handle it differently in private, uh, we, we can speak about that with authority. We do not speak about uh, or speculate about the ultimate nature of what UFOs are because we don't know. And there are no documents that we can point to. If they are, they're written in, um, you know, some Star Trek language. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we stayed with what we could, could say. And that's why it's, re it's been recognized as the best work of history on the subject ever written. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. So I think we can highly recommend that to our uh, audience today. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you a lot.